here's if, if a player were to win all four Grand Slam events, they would make $1.1 million. Here's $2 million being offered to the guy to play in this one, you know, it's a one-week event. It's difficult to sincerely scandalize top players with money, but it's it's happened now. We, uh, we had a chance to speak with some of the players about this, whether or not they would play. Lendl seems to feel that he will play, may cheer as well, know as well, but there are many others who say they won't. Here's what just a couple of them said earlier this week. I think it's it's a lot of money and uh, it doesn't really make sense to put up so much money in an eight-man event. And uh, that's the first feeling I had when you know I read about the thing and, and it makes even the Grand Slam look bad money-wise and it looks makes ATP final, which is supposed to be the big thing at the end of the year, doesn't make that look very good. And you know, the Grand Slam tournaments are the ones you want to win. I really cannot understand why they why they put it on. Uh, uh, it has many many problems with it. You know, it's in our off season. It's uh, way too much money compared to the other events. It's. Uh, um, it's uh, three, four weeks behind after our year finish, you know, the ATP Masters in Frankfurt. That thing is probably also going to be in Germany. And so there are many bad things uh, coming with that event. And, but still, you know, the players are now put into a bad position. You know, it's, they're playing for $2 million, the winner. You know, that can change their whole life. And uh, I think uh, it's difficult for most players to, to say no to that because, you know, it's, it's just so much money. And uh, I think the ITF has to think a little bit about w w what they did and where they want to go with tennis. You know, I haven't really thought about it too much, but I think a lot of the players um, have given it some negative uh, press. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, anyone who puts that kind of money into the game, you know, can't be bad for tennis. You know, I, I'd have to say, you know, if I, if I made the tournament, I'd, I'd probably support it and play it. It's hard to uh, turn down all that money, you know, a chance to win all that money. and. Uh, and just see what happens. I mean, we don't know if it's going to happen, but, um, you know, it's kind of an exciting uh, thing to have. I think whereas uh, the players, you know, competing in the Grand Slams and trying to make this big event, I think it's good for tennis. It's crazy to even think about. I mean, I no, it was a shock to everybody. I mean, it was just unbelievable. It still is. I think it's just sinking in, and uh, that's why uh, the players are going to discuss it for a couple weeks, uh, come up with a solid policy, and then uh, make a statement at the Masters. It's just $2 million is just, I mean, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. That's the Grand Slam Cup that those players are talking about. McEnroe, meanwhile, has won the first game of the second set. Becker is serving. It is love 15. Uh, one thing is for sure, and that is that the lines are drawn between the International Tennis Federation supporting this, this Grand Slam Cup that the players clearly feel is aimed directly at the ATP Tour Finals. As Tim Mayotte said earlier this week, it's a time of crisis because it could splinter the top players. Just a yeah. final thought on that. The top players are, are sitting back there saying, well, you know, if they keep on arguing like this, you know, there'll be another $6 million <laughs> tournament thrown in here and then maybe another couple of $4 million events and hey, we might only have to play 10 weeks of the year next year and make 10 million bucks. That won't be too bad either. Uh, we talked to Sergio Palmieri, who's uh, John McEnroe's agent, and he said that that was exactly what this tournament was designed to do, split the top players to the detriment of the ATP Tour. We'll keep you posted. 30 love, McEnroe, or I should say love 30, McEnroe. Door opens for McEnroe here because he held serve comfortably in the opening game of the second set after frustration set in and he lost seven points in a row to lose the tiebreaker in the first set to Becker. Oh boy, oh boy. Now you have a look at McEnroe's reaction there. That's Love 30. He made a great return, forced Becker off on his heels to play that shot. And he could have put that forehand anywhere. Just went for a little bit too much and, and hit it long. Boy, that difference there between on, particularly with Boris Becker's uh, 15-30 and Love 40.
the line. No, he's wrong about that. He's saying brilliant call, but it was clearly on, if not inside the line. He had a big discussion with Richard Ings in the chair after that first tie break. I mean, this, this poor guy was under the gun. Macron was trying to explain to him what a lousy job he was doing. He was saying that Becker was taking more than 30 seconds between points. Ings was explaining that sometimes, with, if there's crowd noise or whatever, that has to happen. Puts pressure on himself. He's missed four. He's missed three forehands here. He had love 30 and three relatively easy forehands for John McEnroe. Has let Boris Becker off the hook in this opening service game in the second set. Again, putting pressure on himself. I got a clock on Becker. 20 seconds as of now. Boris Becker coming in with the net cam, the stutter step, and then the volley. But watch this. Now he gets the footwork ready and dives for that one. McEnroe, good hands from the baseline. He hit a half volley cross court forehand for the winner. Ned! Uh, that was another. 27 seconds. I mean, for the last two points, it's been just three seconds short of the allowable 30 seconds. But this is exactly uh, how uh, John used to operate uh, when he was the number one player in the world. He tried to dictate the trend of the match, and the, and the top players in the world try to get into their own rhythm, and there's nothing wrong with that. To, to, to accuse Becker, as John has done, two different ways of gamesmanship is absolutely absurd. The man doesn't need it, and he doesn't use it. Avantage. Becker's second ace of the day. Becker won the first set in the tiebreaker. McEnroe leads at one game to love. This is game point for Becker to tie things up in the second set. game for both players. Good shot of uh, the camera work that is being done by our French friends from Channel 3. But a very important game here for Boris Becker to stay in this second set. And if McEnroe is to get back into the match, he really has to keep his mind on the job and struggle and convert here early in the second set because he had love 30 and an easy forehand and he re still remembers that shot. Tough to do much about that one, though. One game all in the second set. 